Uh, hi, Sri. Uh, hi, Raymond. This is Sean. Hi, Sean. How are you? Hi there. I'm doing good. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, uh, he's our trainer. Uh, his name is Sri. So he's going to, um, you know, uh, take you through the PMP certification training. So uh, we can we can get started, and uh, I'll be I'll be um, in the uh, I'll be in the session. So whenever you have a question, yes, you can go ahead and ask the trainer. And uh, at the end of the session, I will call you uh, to give the feedback of the session. Okay. Okay. Hey, thanks, Sean. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Sri. All right then. Yeah. Let's go. Wenzel, this is Sri, and uh, good morning, and welcome to iSmart once again. Happy to see you here. Good morning. Yeah. Uh, Wenzel, before getting further on, um, let me give you a little introduction about me. That will help you to understand um, what is the background, right? And is my volume clear for you? Is Am I audible to you? Uh, Wenzel, am I audible to you? You're able to hear well? Yes. Perfect. Great. Thanks for confirming that. So I'll just share the screen so that uh, you can get a view of my background details and then I'll get a little introduction about yourself. Then we'll move forward. So what I do. Okay. My okay. Sri. Okay. You're able to see the screen now. Yes. Great. Okay. Uh, I'm doing a project management coach and consultancy for a couple of organizations. And I'm doing with iSmart for a while. And we have done with a good amount of candidates who cleared the PMP certifications. So uh, I come with a background of a PMP, project management professional certification, which completed uh, three years back. And again, I did with uh, PMI ACP, which talks about agile certification, right? That's a bit a uh, hot keyword in the market talks about agile. So with me, I hold master's in computers, master's in business administration, and master's in psychology. So I hold with around 17 years of experience in uh, Fortune 500 companies, specifically did a good amount of work with Verizon. I believe you should be aware of most of the Verizon products. Correct. Right. Yeah, that, that's the background coming up and a good amount of um, coaching and consultancy where I come with the more knowledge on project management, the principles and the best practices followed in the top fortune companies where they show good results year after year. So that's uh, a little about me. So uh, I'd be much eager to understand from your side in the sense of uh, coming out with a good background. Uh, if I'm not wrong, I was able to see some of your achievements as you did a good amount of projects, right? Most, mostly with the uh, infrastructure oriented, if I'm not wrong. Correct. Right, great. Happy to see that. I saw come a couple of your project pictures as well. I think you posted that really well. Looks very uh, good in a sense, uh, well, well achieved. So uh, I'll be happy uh, hearing about little background about you and a little more information, uh, which I can take it before I get into the course where I can speak the subject which you uh, like to hear. Uh, I'm currently an architect um, okay. mm -hmm. in, in uh, Rochester, New York, uh, where it's a little bit chilly right now. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm trying to... Uh, step up in my in my uh, employment a little bit just by taking some training courses, which is uh, why why I'm here to take this PMP course. Great, great, that's great, great, that's great, Benzel. So you play an architect role. So if I understand really well, uh, there will be a team, and this team will decide on the what is a project to be executed and there will be a plan drafted for the execution of the project and you would be the key person who decides the design of the project and you will be the key person who will be driving the technical factors of the project is my understanding correct correct i would be uh leading a team along um, in the design and through construction actually in construction, you will be leading the team with the design and the suggestions to make a more value engineering or 
more effective execution of the project. Correct. That's amazing. So uh, how many years you'll be doing this uh, as an experience? Uh, about 32. Wow, that's amazing. So um, when you say 32 years and you would have reached good number of projects, isn't it? Yes, um, probably uh, about, um, right now I'm working on five consecutively, so. Oh, five. God, man, it's a good time to sleep. <laughs> sleep is overrated. <laughs> That's really high. You should be a superhuman. <laughs> That's great. That's great. But that comes out of experience, I believe. And uh, can I say you would have touched at least 50 or 70 projects in, in this 32 years or more than that? Um, more than that. Yeah, if I say in a year you're doing a, around a 10 to 15 projects, it will be more than hundreds, isn't it? Yeah, pretty close. Yeah, I would think. Wow, that's good. Good. You did a good amount of projects. So, uh, what, is, what is that which is making you more interesting in the project? Uh, what do you like I, in a project? What do I like in the project? Yeah. Um, I actually like um, working with the people and then... Um, Mm -hmm. making the project come through in the end uh, complete and the client happy. Mm, I like one thing, Wenzel. What do you say the last sentence? What do you say the last sentence? Keep client happy. And that's the most powerful and success statement of any project. Yeah, thanks for saying that. I know when we go for any project management understanding or the latest one which you talk about agile methodology, they all talk the one sentence very strong which talks about customer satisfaction i believe you are already top of it okay great and uh, I, I understood that you want to learn through the course and understand a little bit about the project management from the pmi perspective is that right correct amazing so on, uh, it, not to deny on that in this, as you worked for so many years in project management you already would have been tuned up to understand how a project will come inside the system, how a budget of the project get allocated, and how the timeline of the project is finalized, and how it is getting executed. I'm sure you will be in and out on the process. Is it right? Correct. Amazing. Now, there's nothing going to be very new for you when you go for the PMI, PMP. When I say PMI, Project Management Institute, which is which is the most powerful institute in the world, which talks talks about project management, right? So uh, when we when we take into consideration of PMI, they go around 185 countries and do a lot of analysis on the successful projects, and also they do around failure projects. There is a stats talking that more than 65% of the projects fail in the world. What they mean by fail? It means a project which is not delivered within the time which is mentioned could be considered as a failure. A project which cannot deliver within the budget cannot be considered as a success. A project where the customer is not happy with the deliverable could be again considered as a failure. So the stat says that more than 65% of the projects fail in the world now. And now PMI is going around different countries and different managers, different domain and getting the essence out of it and telling that, guys, we have a system here. If you're going to learn it, if you're going to implement it, the chances of your project being successful is very high. Does it sound interesting? Yes. Yeah. Very interesting. I, I like it. I like PMI very much. I, in fact, love PMI very much because uh, they, they, they just didn't go with the one domain. They go to n number of domains. It may be construction. It can be IT. It can be a pharma. It can be something naval. It can be something on military. They go to n number of projects across different countries to understand and get the essence out of it. And they bring it to the table. That is called project management 
professional which we are going to learn now even if i'm jumping deep inside and as you given a good amount of experience which you have behind you i'll just give a heads up to understand what is the plan we have and how we are going to do this what is the background of pmp i'll i'll just give a brief about it and that will help you to get the background knowledge before we get into the actual subject okay even before yeah even before i jump further in uh, i will i will understand a little more from your side what are the what are the questions coming up in your mind when you thought about pmp so that i can note it down and i can start addressing it if anything bigger question from your side i think i think the the uh, biggest thing is to understand the process the the full process um project management to me is mm-hmm. is more of in order uh steps by step to make it go through right now i don't do that i don't think okay okay so you want to understand what are the process being followed correct okay okay that noted one question so what is the next one coming up in your mind when you think of pmp um i i think it's how mm-hmm. do i get people to follow that that, wow. that plan wow okay the toughest question in the world people to follow you know what when we look at the plan the plan looks very smooth and easy for us but when you want to convince the person to do it that was a challenge task and in pmp we have something called interpersonal skills where they talk about how you negotiate how you influence a person to get along with the goal of the organization in fact you got the right question in the mind wenzel i appreciate it okay so i noted on the second question so anything third coming up in your mind i i think those are the two main topics right at the moment fantastic okay as we proceed you will throw more questions that's great yep so um thanks for the question the question one talks about the process followed and the second one is how to make the people follow it and uh, this is going to be an elaborate discussion of course we going to have a multiple hours of session with you and a um, couple of more team members coming on so that's going to be interesting where we going to elaborate it much depth inside right so now i will give a little background about why some pmp pmp comes up and what is the benefit of doing this certification and how to approach this certification so i will give this information and this can take little time for you i think we'll explain the details and this will be very handy and informative for you as you can take it to the next level when you complete the certification part to start with if you see the screen what i sharing here this is a website of pmi i believe you should have browsed already uh, i went there a couple times i haven't joined it at all but cool okay not needed now um but uh, it is an open website anybody can browse in so it is a pmi.org the pmi stands for project management institute they are the market for nearly last four decades and they are very very familiar in 185 countries very famous reason being of this standard now when you talk about standard before that anybody can come over and you can create a profile for yourself it is it is not charged it's free you can get an account and now after you get an account if you just click the certification part you will see good amount of certifications here pmp pmfp pmi acp it goes on goes on out of which we are here that is project management professional and same way we have something for program management something for portfolio management we have good amount of certificates one of the flagship program of pmi is the pmp certification where we are now now what is this pmp all about pmp talks about project management professional and what is project management professional it's going to take you deep inside to make you understand the importance of handling the project effectively within the constraints 
within the resource given to a manager and deliver with a high standard or high quality. Few minutes back, you said that I love to work with people and I like to give satisfaction to the customer. That's the most valuable point any manager can bring up. And the PMP principles and PMP standards will help anybody to do that. Now, a little more information on that. Uh, PMP is a certificate which goes along where you have to prepare the course as you are doing and listening the session now. By listening to the session, you are going to get around 35 PDUs. Now, what is PDUs? It is professional development unit which is needed for to go for the certification exam. Okay, there are certain criteria which will make you to go for the examination. I will explain a little bit later. For now, I will tell you you're going to have a learning session with the registered institutes with which you get the eligibility to go for the examination. And beyond that, you're going to show some of your work experience, right? Now, I will just show some of the basic criteria expected in PMP. Okay, here is the thing which you see in the screen. Prerequisites for going for the exam. If you are a secondary degree or school diploma holder, the person will have to show 7,500 hours of experience and 35 hours of learning. 35 hours you will get from high smart, no worry on that. Definitely you should have a qualification with you, either diploma or with a four year degree. Yeah, that will solve you. And the way the question will come is, the question is on the 4,500 hours of project leading experience. But no worry on your case, Wenzel, since you are you have worked for the last 32 years your experience list is very huge so the 4500 hours goes around approximately three years if you're going to show three years of experience you will be eligible for the examination yeah so uh, this three years should come in the last eight years of your project what you did so now we are in 2019 it means from 2011 end or 11 middle you can show the experience that is hardly 4500 hours before i go further in have you leaded a project from beginning to the end i lead projects uh every day um fantastic fantastic and i so you i have the um the secondary degree i don't have the four-year degree so that's okay great great so you can show 7500 hours which is approximately five years. Okay, yep. that's how it works. Yeah, I think you are eligible to do that. And then there is no worry on this part because you can get into this application. And uh, when you apply for the examination, there are some fee structure, member or non-member. You may be paying around $405 to PMI Institute. It is an online payment where you make from the website. Okay. And this you will do only after completing the course, what we're going to learn now. After the course, you will be given with some of the practice test. You will write the test. And if you feel comfortable, ready for the exam, on that moment, I will be there supporting you to fill the application form. I'll just show you a hint how the application form looks. I hope you are able to see my screen now. I am. Yeah, the application form will look something like this, where, uh, yeah, I'll show you. Okay, here is it. In application form, you will fill some details about the project. This is a project description, which a sample, it is a sample purely. What is the objective of the project? What is the role in the project? What you did? And some of the information. I'll be completely with you to share and help you to fill the form in the sense of I'll share the templates and we'll be working as a team. And uh, in the project, how many hours you spent on five areas? I'll explain what this five years later. For now, understand that this is how the form should be filled. Like this, for me, I filled three projects. For you, it will become four, five projects. If I go a little down, one more project. And if I go a little more down, it will be another first set of projects. Now, this is the application filled for applying for the examination, right? So now you will do this, you apply for the examination and the PMI Institute will welcome you for the examination. 
and you'll go and take an examination in a pro metric center have you been to pro metric center for writing exams uh pro metrics yeah yeah there's a couple of them in the area here oh is it okay pro metric.com okay so it's nearby your place it's okay. the same place that i took my architectural exams Ah, oh, okay. So you did that. So you know the security system. What they follow there? Yep. <laughs> was it crazy? Uh, it was interesting, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> okay, they will check out all the factors, right? You can't carry anything inside the room, right? That's how it goes. I I believe you have been visited the website. If not, this is the website. You will go and apply for the examination. I'll give details on this elaborated little more later point. For now, you have to understand that uh, when once you, these details are good with you, we will click this apply button. There is something called apply in the website. When you click apply, it will take you to a page where you fill all the details like what I showed in the PDF document. Once you fill in, your application is ready. It will go to PMI Institute, and within five business days, they'll reply back saying that. Your application is good for examination. The moment they say you are good for the examination, you will pay the exam fee. And after paying the exam fee, you will come to this website and fill the details for the examination. That is, you will say, "I am good to go for the examination." All right? If you see here, it has in 180 countries. So you can write in any part of the world, any city for the exam. There is no restriction. So that's that's the basis of the thing. Do you have any questions related to examination application coming in your mind? No questions. Fantastic. So now I will give a little heads up. What's the background of PMP? Now the project management profession is the most important industry recognized certification. What it means is across any domain in different country, there is always a demand for the best manager. The problem happening in the current scenario in the world is we have managers but may not have an effective manager. A manager would have worked only the execution part of the project. A manager would have been done only day-to-day -day activity. What is the world is looking out is they're looking out for the manager who can take the whole responsibility of the work and make it happen smoothly. What do you mean by smoothly? There can be ups and downs coming up in the project. There can be shortage of resources. There could be shortage of a fund supply. There could be shortage in timeline. There should be big risk coming in the project. There could be heavy rain or a heavy power supply problem or could be materials in supply problem and still get to the end goal. And this can be done only by an effective manager who has a good amount of experience who has a good amount of domain knowledge. And the market study of PMP says that the people who have a PMP certified are getting at least 20% higher on average. Does it sound interesting when the salary goes high? Uh, I like that idea. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> End of day, we work very hard to get the satisfaction from the customer and also my pocket should be full right <laughs> so i want <laughs> i want more dollars how to get it <laughs> of course see uh, when you have around 32 years of experience and the pmi pmp is not going to be new to you it's going to be a very easy subject but when you get a certificate your resume your profile looks more powerful when you apply for a next contract people will be ready to pay you more dollars than a person without a pmp now, why someone has to do that? Is it so powerful? Yes, it is. How to understand that part? I will take a stat which came out recently from PMI Institute. They talked about job growth and talent gap. And there is a study talking about how much of expectation in the market for the effective managers and what is a gap happening in the year of 2017 to 2027, which is the next seven or eight years. If you see that, there is a huge amount of gap 
and it's a huge amount of gap the people who as opportunities are growing much of the available talent is getting retired these factors are creating an extraordinarily positive jobs outlook for a skilled project professional what do i mean by skilled in the sense a manager who has efficient knowledge about the techniques to handle things smoothly right and they're saying that by 2027 employers will need 8.7 billion individuals working in project management did you see that 8.87.7 million that's a very very huge number and there's a tremendous demand for project managers when you talk about demand and this comes out of 11 countries which took first stats of course us stands very tall on that if you have canada coming up australia is there we have china falling there india falling there we have brazil falling there all these countries going to have a tough time to get an effective managers to do the task i'm keep stressing on the word effective the reason being is we have managers who can do the task what is asked to do but the market is not looking those kind of managers managers who can be very proactive managers who can think beyond the boundaries managers who can forecast certain things and that's the kind of managers the market is looking at for i go a little further down specifically in healthcare the demand is going to be very high in us specifically and some more industries being studied where the demand is going to be very high and then will be so much delighted to know that your industry is the top list do you see that i'm ready for that <laughs> <laughs> okay i like your speed <laughs> <laughs> do you follow in this category yes yeah. i do yep construction you are there right yep your domain comes there and your domain is highly highly in demand when it's a high demand the dollar value is high the satisfaction rate is going to be high and this is a prediction for 2027 in 5 to 6 years your role will be tremendously needed right this is the stats coming out and this again did in 11 countries if you see 11 countries coming up of course us stands tall in that okay now yeah now i'll take to this place now i'm keep saying manager is needed effective managers when i say that what do you mean by effective it means i'll take this one if you see this diagram there is something called talent triangle this is uh, one which comes from pmi the project management institute they expect three input important inputs in a manager in a leader to make it happen when we say effective leader effective manager the manager will have these ingredients to tell them that yes this person can handle the project what are they the first one talks about strategy and business management how much the manager is aware of the organization strategy how much the manager is aware of the business thought process of the organization the more the leader is clear about the strategy of the organization the better the results are i will tell you they saying that more than 65% of the projects are failing in the world on the reason analysis happened and they found that there is a frequent change of organization strategies which is one of the reason for project failure now an organization suddenly changes their strategy in the middle of the year in the middle of the project there is a chance the project can fail now if ev if me or you being a leader in a company and i am clear about what is the strategy of the company i can think and make decision based on that in advance rather waiting for someone to give me instruction so strategy of organization is very important for a manager to take it forward okay i got a strategy i know what is the top five priorities of my company the share value should go 5% high the goodwill should go high my all my building should have a highest quality standard in the world those are my strategy fine now how to do that now as a leader as a manager i should have technical management knowledge what is technical management you are knowing tools and techniques of the project how to handle it it can be even excel sheet how to use excel sheet effect efficiently how to use some of the tools to handle the project smoothly how to make the calculation of the costing factor 
So the more you know technology and technical factors of the project, the better we can serve it. Now I got the strategy. I got the technical factors. Is this too enough? I will say no. We need a third factor, which is very, very important, which talks about leadership. This is one of the toughest topic in any management study. Because when you talk about leadership, it comes and as, as an ingredient about people. A person who can be very good at people management always considers a great leader. What does that mean? You gave one of the point, how to make people to follow. Yeah, that's one of the questions you asked me. That's the toughest question in the world in the sense that people may not react in the same way what we want. A person so good at Monday morning will be bad at Tuesday morning. We don't know why. It could be family reasons. It could be technical deficiency. It could be something wrong, not happy with the company. We don't know why. But still, as a manager, as a leader, we should be able to drive them towards the organizational goal. And that ability is called as influential skills or negotiation skills, along with interpersonal skills, where we know what to talk, when to talk, how to convince, how to set the rewards and recognition system, how to keep the team motivated every day. That makes it happen. Right. So, so what's expected here is the ad says that we expect more number of managers. If you see here in your industry, you want 9.7 million people to come over there. But what kind of people? They want the people who can talk all the three. When I say all the three, you should be so good in strategy of the company organization. We should know about the technical factors of the project. We should know the leadership ability of the project. And this is a driving factor of project success. I will go 10 years back. In 10 years back, the environment was like this. A person could be so good in people management. So he is called as a people manager. A person so good in technology or technical factors, it's called techno manager. And those days have gone now. And they look out for a manager who talks all the three. They don't want each one different, different manager. They want the same manager to handle all these factors. Right? So that's what expectation happening in the market. Now, why this is being explained here now? Because all these three factors are being full and full explained in PMP. When you go through the subject of understanding, you'll get a top to bottom understanding how to be strategic, how to be technical, how to be leadership. Right? That's what's going to happen. And yeah, these are all stats made by the famous group Anderson Economic Group. They came out with the stats of what we are reading now, right? There are top, top countries in the list where the need is very high. You can see China stands number one, where the demand is very high. Second goes with India and third goes with the United States. So this is the one which is going to happen. You'll be surprised even Japan is expecting more because the population ratio is so different there and they're expecting more number of efficient managers coming up. Right, that's happening. Right, and uh, yeah, again, it goes a deficit. The, the, the GDP at risk. Some of the countries having great GDP risk and they don't have a good managers. If you see that, China stands somewhere far, far away. You can't even count the numbers, very huge. Then uh, China, I mean, US and India stands very closer. They have a deficit in getting the right managers. And why I'm putting all these points here is there's a huge amount of demand for efficient managers. Now, how to address this gap? The addressing point is nothing but learning project management methodologies and try to implement it efficiently in a project, right? So that's what we're going to learn through. Okay, great. So until now, any questions, Wenzel? Something popping up in your mind? No questions at this point. Okay, are you able to follow what I'm trying to say here? Yes. Okay. Uh, are you comfortable in the way the explanation is going? Any modification to be done for you? No, I'm comfortable. Fantastic, fantastic. We'll go on. Thanks for confirming that. So sure. what I do, I do, by the way, I didn't show my certificate to you so that you'll be happy to see I'm a PMP guy. Awesome. <laughs> Great news. 
<laughs> yeah <laughs> by the way yeah okay yeah, you should know right you are talking to a pmp guy <laughs> okay when you, when you PMP, what will happen is you will get a certificate like this and this certificate will have a number do you see a number here three six seven digit okay okay this is the pmp number which is given to you and this will be the number which you can put in your resume or profile telling okay. that i'm a pmp qualified person cool and uh, anybody can verify your number telling that you are, are you eligible or not and uh, once you complete it the certificate is valid for 3 years okay same as the architectural license perfectly and you have a now now you may ask a question after third year what will happen do i need to write the exam again if that's a question there is no need to write the exam but you have to renew the certificate now how to renew it after 3 years or close to 3 years what you will do is you will gain some pdus what is pdus professional development unit so in this 3 years of timeline you have to sit and listen classes something like what you are doing now or you have to listen to some of the webinars which is available in internet by that what you are going to do is 6 hours of learning you are going to do within the 3 years now what's the message here the message here is PMI Institute is expecting you to learn something in the three years. If they see that you have learned something, they allow your certificate to be renewed. If you don't have any learning, they will say that your certificate is invalid further on. Right? This is how things works. Is it the same way the architect works for you? Architect certificate? Uh, architecturally, we have to do uh, 18 hours every year, every three years. Ah, it's a bit lesser for you. You're safe on that side. Yep. Yeah. Ho hopefully I could probably use some of those hours for both of these. <laughs> You're so clever in that area. <laughs> <laughs> no need to say. Hey, how is it this architect uh, certificate? Do they go very deep inside on technical factors? What, what was that? The art architect certificate which you took over, will it go deep and explain the subject or it will be very high level? No, they go pretty deep. Okay, okay. So when you did the certificate? Your, your, your volume seems to be going up and down a little bit. Is it better now? Yep. Okay, uh, when you would have done this architect certificate? Is it sometime recent? Um, it was uh, the original certificate in 2004. Mm -hmm. Ah, okay, pretty long. Good. So you keep renewing every two to three years. Three years, yep. Yeah. Every three years. That's great. So you aren't touching the subject. Amazing. Yep. Amazing. Amazing. Great. 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 Okay. Uh, yeah. So uh, wages. Uh, there is a gap analysis here with a non PMP certified or PMP certified person. What's the wages gap here? If you see the uh, web, I mean the screen here. Now we are somewhere in 2019. So the stat stocks between four and 17. They say there's a huge gap. You see the blue line here. That's for the project management oriented occupants, non project management oriented occupants. So you see the gap here. The gap goes around 82%, right? That's very, mm -hmm. very, very much high. And what they're trying to say here is a person with a standard certification with them always has higher recognition okay that's how it goes i don't need to say much about because you are already a certified person you know the value of certification yep that's amazing great now now you may ask me is this pmp really working so interestingly i pulled out some of the infrastructure related project for you uh, which is a case study of pmi you may be having some interest on this uh, there is a project which uh, worked out in hong kong for the natural gas pipeline right uh, you may know that how complicated the gas pipeline project would be mm -hmm. if you see the the picture map here the pipeline starts from here right and it travel all through different region geographical location and crosses the border of china and then come to hong kong it's a very massive project and for which they need a huge amount of budget timeline and resources and specifically to be very careful on the risk factors where no casualties allowed 
Now, what happened is they took over this project with the mindset of utilizing PMP. If you're aware, there is something called PIMBOK, Project Management Body of Knowledge, which is nothing but a, a group which frames the background of project management books and material. And now what happened is they took over this project, keeping in mind of effective way of planning. If you see the terms coming from PMP, they did effective planning. And it's a planning, they talk about all the factors which makes the project to move forward. And they talk about scope management, the requirements. They talk about quality factors. They talk about people management, so very tough, toughest area. They talk about risk and safety, communication, decision, and stakeholder engagement. These are part and parcel of PMP. Now, this particular project team utilize the same PMP methodology for executing this project. It was a very massive project and it took good amount of time to complete it. They even consider the environmental requirements, what all there, which shouldn't impact your project. And what happened is the successful outcome. Now the project as a result of using the good practices and methodologies from the PMBOK, they finished the Hong Kong branch line on time. If you see, there is something I'm saying about on time. Every project will have one or other constraint and that constraint in a different way will hit on the timeline when we deliver it. We want to deliver by the month of January, but for some reason it got delayed and the project will be delivered only the month of February. If that's going to happen that way, it can't be considered as a successful project because we can't deliver within the time which has been asked for. Now we look at the gas pipeline project, it's a huge massive project, still they're able to execute within the time because they're able to follow the practice and methodologies which is being recommended. And the first gas line arrived in December 2012 and officially started supplying to the people around there or commercial points. Now point here is there are some systematic approach given by the industry and following that there is a higher chance of completing the project within the timeline within the budget. Right. So this this covers the basis of why PMP is needed. In fact, I have good amount of case studies explained by each project. I will cover it as I go deep inside the subject. For now, you have to understand that this kind of implementation or this kind of methodologies are being used in day in day out of n number of projects across different countries. So that's giving them real success. Now saying that what I'll do, I'll take you to the area where I will talk some of the basics for you about PMP. I hope the screen is visible for you. Yes, that's good. Yeah, as it is first day Wenzel, I will not tax you too much because uh, maybe after a long time you're listening for the classes. So I will go with a slow pace to show, make you understand the basics, what is the background we come from. And once we get the momentum, the speed will go a little higher. Will that be good for you? Okay, that's fine. Great. And because I know that uh, sitting in the class and listening, it's kind of a little tough process. It's not that easy process. Right. Now, yes, welcome to the iSmart. Now let's go. Um, it goes like this. We have a good amount of uh, agenda to be covered. I just put on for the four days, but it will be extended as we go further on because the subject is a bit vast here. Uh, we will talk about good amount of areas of stakeholders management, how the stakeholder communication will happen. Then we'll go deep inside of scope, schedule and quality. And in fact, I'll give you a heads up on that. What okay. I do. What I do is, um, okay. There are a set of constraints and projects. Is it, am I getting audible to you, Tom? My audio uh, is good? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, project lives around six constraints. The first constraint is scope. Which is requirement, right? Requirement of the project. This is one of the constraints. The second constraint is schedule, the timeline of deliverable. The third constraint is cost. These three are called as triple constraints. Have you heard it? Have you 
have you heard the triple constraint before i have not okay so this a triple constraint is a triangle is a triangle of where you have to complete the work within this within this particular stream if not it is going to be tougher so they put a triangle where in this triangle you will have the triple constraint right you will have a scope you will have a schedule you will have a cost factors and you have a cost factors this is called triple constraint scope schedule and cost factors fine and now now what happen is apart from this triple constraint we have another three more constraints and they are called as first one is quality is a constraint the next one is going to be resource is a constraint when we say resource it could be human resource it could be material on the next constraint talked about the risk factors in the project right now if i count it i will see 1 2 3 three constraints again 4 5 6 so totally i will have six constraints in the project now what i mean by constraint here is these are the parameters these are the ingredients these are the information or system which may or may not allow your project to move smoothly if there is a change in the requirement that will make a change in time of deliverable change in time of deliverable will increase the cost of the project when a new requirement comes in it will hit the quality of course i need more human resource the new requirement can bring more risk also so if one changes risk all will also have impact and this is called as constraints and a manager should live within that i believe enzel definitely will be already doing this factors are you yes okay what is the what is the top most constraint you face in your project out of the six it's typically scope creep oh i got exactly that i love it you know this you, you know that term as well this is a pmi term scope creep so what happens will it be a new requirement coming in or existing requirement get collapsed no oh, the client the client gets a project going and then they come back and say well uh huh? we need to add this we need to add that to this scope <laughs> okay. we try we try to tell them no that doesn't fit within the budget but they still huh? insist they push it okay yep. so will you be pushed to do the work or you will bounce back saying no we can't do it uh we we go back and forth until the end and then we uh are actually pushed to do it <laughs> god sick it's a bad thing right yeah oh man then you have to compromise on something on quality there are a little comp- compromise on quality cuz typically we uh, run out of human resources so there's no way to uh, keep up uh, with that so you're going to spend more time with the people that you have yeah you know what yeah when you do this kind of scope creep the risk will go high the project risk will pump up high yep you might yeah. miss something because you're last minute trying to get it done seriously seriously and when that happens they call them as a project which is not successful right now uh, yeah that's happened that's happening and I, i i really wonder always at this construction oriented project which is so complicated which is more dangerous in the way of execution there are good amount of projects in the world that to nowadays people think and talk more about it projects the software but i still believe construction is a one of the massive project in the world it by budget the project is very high the amount is very high but when you talk about other parameters and factors i feel the construction the infrastructure is a one huge massive okay that's that's interesting to listen from you now uh, i'm talking about the the basics from where the pmp is coming up the pmp is trying to cover all the six constraints to explain each one in depth in fact in coming days i'm going to spend time in scope where i will make sure that the scope creep cannot happen in future 
you will also understand how you can communicate effectively to the stakeholders so that they don't change the plans here and there so we'll spend time there we'll spend time to talk about schedule management how the particular timeline will align for the work i believe wenzel you're doing wbs already work breakdown structure are you doing it yes oh great great so from the scope you will get the wbs so now then the wbs how the scheduling happens and scheduling is nothing but talk about timeline when you are going to do it how we are going to do it and then you talk about the cost factors quality resource risk i will go deep inside every subject and explain you and this falls under pmp when you see six constraints i will talk three more factors which makes a pmp that is stakeholder management this is one of the most important one what it mean here right yeah here stakeholder management talks about people who directly or indirectly impacted or impacting the project a stakeholder can be a positive stakeholder or can be negative stakeholder who are it is but we have to handle them effectively how to handle them effectively for that we have one more idea called as communication management that's a yeah, big one yeah we'll talk about that yeah sorry that's a big big one there <laughs> yeah communication subject wise it is small when we read in the book but in reality that's the biggest area if the communication plan is not made effectively i will tell you the project has no direction to go it's a direction less until we know who all my stakeholders until i know what is the way of communication they want the project doesn't have any path to go forward i will take a project of a birthday party a birthday party is a project the party is going to happen coming sunday so i'll plan it i will understand who all the stakeholders it could be the musician coming up it could be cake supplier it could be a party light fixing person it could be some of the beverages supplier these all the stakeholders and also some of the friends who i'm going to invite they are also stakeholders the neighbors near me they are the stakeholders right now if i know all the stakeholders i should know how to communicate with them when to communicate what to communicate and what is the mode of communication expected what is the frequency of communication the more we know about this the better the project moves and to be very honest i am seeing many managers have trouble in this two area that is stakeholder and communication because they couldn't understand who all interested in this project and they couldn't understand when i have to communicate and what i have to communicate sometimes over communication is also a problem we should be careful enough what need to be said what shouldn't be said and this again we we'll learn in depth in pmp now what happened here we understood there are six constraints i'll clear it off i'll clear it off okay we have six constraints and then we have two more stakeholder communication there is something one more called as procurement management procurement management right so procurement talks about the vendoring part the third party i am sure when sir you will be dealing with many vendors in order to complete your project is it right correct okay is it a smooth dealing with vendor or you have more complication um it's when they add more it'll add more complications <laughs> add more complications i like the sentence from you <laughs> <laughs> so now what happen is procurement we understand what these guys are all about who is going to do that so we'll decide are we going to make it or we are going to buy it it's called make or buy analysis we will decide can we do this or can we go to third party when you know third party you sign an agreement with them to supply the material for you to supply the equipment what you want 
to supply human resource to complete the work for you right that's called agreement and we'll talk clearly about procurement when you talk procurement we also talk about contract is it a fixed price is it a cost reimbursable cost price contract yeah usually a fixed price for us but fixed price or is it a time and material yeah makes sense yep. yeah we we talk all these factors this is all being explained in detail page by page number by number they explain everything in procurement management now what happened is interestingly if you count all these factors i am just counting all these factors so i was saying six constraints which make the project uh, move forward when you handle it effectively with the six constraints you have three more areas stakeholder communication and vendor now this nine areas are called as nine knowledge areas as a manager we should have idea in all the nine areas i am sure these words are not new to you you know all this stuff already yes exactly now what you have to do is how to do in order that's what you're going to learn right so so nothing new here for you i'll tell you everything is a fingertips already um you may be surprised oh man i know all this stuff i have i have doing it every day i don't know why you guys are teaching me <laughs> you're going to ask me. <laughs> sure sure you're going to ask me come on guys i'm getting this every day <laughs> right yeah but no yeah and then you are breathing it 32 years oh my god you are breathing it already <laughs> right well i'm assuming you're going to hit details that uh, i don't know yet so yeah we are going to learn some details on some of the terms when i said terms there are some keywords used in and those keywords are the one which will be a international language when you want to talk with another manager on other side the beauty of learning pmp is now you want to communicate with a massive project coming to you from brazil they're asking you wenzel i have 1 billion worth of project can you take the project and you're saying them guys i did a small projects i did around 100 200 projects but i'm not sure i can take a 1 billion worth of project and then with the team you will say that come on guys show me the contract let me read through that if i feel comfortable let me talk to your managers and now when you go to talk to the brazil and you get a big project and you are talking to them and when you have the pmp with you you know the international terms used and you will speak a language the guy other side the pmp person he or she will speak the same language and you both communicate smoothly to start the project and that's the beauty of learning such certification where you can expand your opportunity of learn, earning in billions we like huge dollars is it right wenzel uh, it is <laughs> i love it i love it the more the money the better you are yeah <laughs> work hard earn well enjoy the life that's right that's right so um but now what's going to happen here is you have the experience you have the information you have all the ups and downs in the project what you have seen so far now only thing in the class what you're going to learn is some of the key terms and some of the words utilized in pmi which may be slightly new to you not pretty new slightly new i'm so impressed when you said so so creep i felt wow because i'm taking classes for so many years and it's very rare on the first day someone said scope creep <laughs> seriously yeah so i'm so impressed with you and you have such a knowledge with you all right so one little thing you're going to put you with this this information so what you see in the screen is nine knowledge areas and to do this nine knowledge area effectively you should integrate this is a very very important part it's called integration management what it mean is you are going to integrate all this nine to make it work as a group 
and when you do that it will become 10 knowledge areas in pmp you are going to learn only this 10 knowledge areas so what you will do you will learn all this nine and then you will integrate it what i mean by integration you are going to coordinate all this effort to achieve the project goal which you are already doing it but how to coordinate there is a system there is a flow there is a pattern so we're going to see that for example you go for a music orchestra there will be a person standing in the center with a two small stick and moving the hands up and down have you watched it yes and what's the name of this person called it, i think it's a director director sounds good one more name is sir can you try again start with c um the director leader. sorry a leader uh no it started c a b c cat c a conductor oh man you rocked i want to give you a pizza for you now <laughs> <laughs> that's cool enough from you yeah it's conductor you're right absolutely so conductor the role of the person stands in the center with the two stick and move the hands up and down and what this guy is doing is he's doing integration and that's the role of a manager you know there's a flute there's a guitar there's a violin there is a drum you know every instrument you know when has to come up when has to go down you know when to call the resource you know when to pull the strings you know what need to be done when and you play the game play the music because in your mind you know the symphony the music tune which should come out when you know the music tune your hands will flow as you like right and that is what integration management now wenzel will become a central person as a conductor move the hands up and down with all this knowledge when you do that you are called as a most powerful leader and manager in the world right so that's the little highlight about it since it's the first day i don't want to kill you too much so i'm giving this highlight for you <laughs> <laughs> i know i know first day should be a little less isn't it when you go to college the first day they don't bug you much <laughs> <laughs> i know it's so crazy to sit on the first day i think i lost the screen let me share it again are you seeing my screen i am just has a little yellow flower in the middle okay is it okay. better now yep cool 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 so let me spend a little more uh, what we'll do wenzel today as being the first day uh, let's not go much deep inside so i'll give some basics of the project management for you and then what we'll do is we will take forward a little more time on understanding some some latest basic stuff and then we'll move to the when you go to the next session i will go a little more deep for you in the meantime i'll share you a couple of books where you can spend little time and read over it okay that that will that will make you to learn gradually uh, i i don't believe in pushing the content on the one day because uh, the project management is something where you can love and learn step by step mm -hmm. great and do you have any books of project management with you now i do not okay 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 um i smart team can help on that and also we'll be sharing a book for you once we get all settled down okay okay um yeah i'm showing a screen here i hope the screen is visible now great and this is stats captured from pmi that is project management institute whenever i say pmi it is project management institute and uh, this team captured up some stats of people completing the certification uh, till 98 that is 1998 the certificate is kept only for the people who is in us and later they open the market to uh, international market where it went very high you can see the graph see how it's growing so 
So yeah. people are willing to complete the certificate because there is a huge, huge demand for the certificate. And now it's, it starts stops in 2016. Now we are 2019. So we have huge number of people complete the certificate, but still it falls less than a million. In the 20 years, we have only less than a million people who complete the certificate. What it means is when the people read and when the people go for the exam, there is a gap. Because some people may not have a good experience. When they go for the exam, they feel tough. But when I'm listening to you, your knowledge is so broad. I believe your exam can happen within a couple of weeks. Yeah. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't think you are a person who need to strain hard to read the project management because you're doing day in day out. You read the book once. I believe you'll just clear it off. Yep. Yeah. Okay. I just pulled some of the stats again. I, from 2020, what is the need here? You can see each country has a huge demand, and specifically China is the one always having a huge demand. But uh, very sorry to say, we can't learn Chinese now. We can learn only project management. So <laughs> I, I don't want to learn Chinese now for project management. So I'll stay with the US and Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> but I like Chinese food. I like Chinese food noodles, but I can't go for project management. <laughs> okay, how, how about you? You like noodles? <laughs> Uh, some of them. Some of them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Great. Okay. I just put over here some of the information about the uh, the benefits of certification. I'm sure you know about it. It's going to make your profile look so amazing. Where if I see five profile out of which one is with the PMP, my hand will directly go with the PMP profile because PMP person is standard saying that high quality person. So that's the industry standard now. And of course, we both love this. That's the dollar. They get high value. We can't say nothing. Networking is going to happen very drastically. Uh, as I was talking about the website, that is it. It's here, right? So in this website, I'm a member. I, I, I paid for it, for which I had to pay $129. So I become a member. So what will happen here is, where do we see it? Membership, membership. Uh -huh. There are a lot of membership system here and you will get connected with the global community. There is a big set of project management top guys in the list. And when you join there, you get contact with them. It is something like your LinkedIn or something like a professional network. You will get connected with n number of people. You'll be amazed. You will get a contact of so high qualified people in the world. And that makes you build a network, very broader network for your professional life. And a lot of experience and growth in a career, it's, it's all guaranteed enough. That's why I put the slide to show the importance of PMP. Okay, I'll just give a heads up why the certification is needed and, um, and some little bit of uh, background of examination. And uh, yeah, why the certification is needed, which makes you, uh, the way you execute the project is going to be a little different the way you did it so far. I am sure in those years, you always given a quality output to the customer, but still sometimes the customer says they're unhappy of the work or they didn't give the payment on time. Some other thing would have happened. You may be surprised why this is happening in spite of my hard work. If you're thinking something like that, the PMP talks very broad enough, says that by learning PMP, you get a broader knowledge of being an effective project manager, right? You minimize the resource utilization. The whole world now talking one term, which is called as cost effectiveness. Are you facing this Wenzel in your project, cost effectiveness? Yes. Okay, so what kind of cost effectiveness they talk about? They want to reduce the cost of the material, labor, or quality. Where do they come? It's a combination of all of them. Okay, okay. Is that making your life more uh, troublesome? It does every once in a while. 
<laughs> sometimes, yeah. you can, sometimes you just can't do it. Seriously, seriously. But the customer will say that, make it, do it, man. I want it. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they, have, they want everything in the world, but they'll say, I'll pay you only one dollar. <laughs> there you go. God, I'll be surprised, man. What are you saying? They say, man, I want this, I want that, I want that, but I'll give you one dollar. <laughs> You're lucky you get a dollar for those increases. <laughs> <laughs> That's a crazy world now we live, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, some years back, decades back, customers were so happy to pay money when they want the work to be done. Now, what's happening here is a more number of competition in the market, and people started giving the same thing with a lesser value. Now, what happened is the competition went higher and higher, and the value started dropping down. The world is very competitive now. If you can't provide something very effective with a lesser cost, you may lose a customer. Now, that doesn't mean that you have to cut short your profit. No. When you give high quality, people still come to you. Let's take an example of the cars running in the market. Even though we get n number of low price cars in the market, People still prefer the cars from BMW, RD, or Benz, or Ducati, or it goes for Rolls Royce. Still going on, isn't it? Yes. They're very expensive, but still people buy it. Why? The pure thing of quality. When there is a high quality, people are ready to pay for it. They're happy to pay for it. But that doesn't mean that you'll take it for granted, I will charge you much. No. So you have to show the best resource utilization. The resource utilization making cost effectiveness, right? So that happens to keep your project really, really running effective. Now what I mean by effectiveness or utilization is, now resource what we get, it has always a demand. It could be human resource or it could be a material. Now, if we don't know how to utilize this resource effectively, there is a chance that the cost may shoot up high. Now, we should know how effectively to use it. When I say effectiveness, I give an example. You have a human resource. You have four people employed with you to work in your project. And these four people, they may not be utilized to the extent they should be. For example, a person should work eight hours per day but I'm allocating a task which is only four hours per day. But the charges for this person is eight hours into $100 per hour, which is going to shoot up very high. As a manager, I should know how to allocate the task which will take eight hours of full work from this resource. It doesn't mean it skews the resource, but what it mean here is, we should know how efficiently utilize the resource for which the customer is paying money. When we do that, the utilization level goes higher. Instead of completing a work in 45 days, I can complete the work in 30 days. I'm just giving a very vague example, but at the same time, what a message I want to convey here is, as a manager, when we know the capacity of the resources, when we know the strength of the resources, we can effectively balance them so that you save a huge amount of energy, huge amount of dollars for the stakeholders. That makes them real happy and that gives a satisfaction. They come back to you again. But here, one thing very careful. In the name of utilizing resource effectively, we cannot drop the quality. Quality stands number one. No compromise in that. With the quality, with effectiveness of utilization of resources, if we can deliver the project on time to the customer, it is falling under top 25 to 35% of successful projects in the world. I think I said at the beginning, nearly 65% of the project fails every year. The reason being is not utilize the resource properly, improper utilization, under utilization, over utilization, lack of communication, lack of clarity in the project, 
improper communication between the upper management and the down layer of resources and these are the reasons happening now why i'm explaining here when you do pmp certification you read through all this information in the book and you'll be very much clarified what it means to be a leader what it means to be a manager to make the project very successful right sounds good let's go to next one so here i have uh, some of the things for the exam eligibility i believe it touches the topic i will redo a little bit on this so you have to i think you have this one diploma right. cool. yeah and uh, ismart is going to help you with this part yeah and uh, third one already you have it and i'll be with you while you fill the form so you are good for the exam application form are you happy on that part yes great by the way uh, wenzel when you are planning for examination you have something in your mind approximate date i i don't at this point but it's not going to be too long after we done here fantastic i like your confidence level great great and because uh, as i'm interacting with you for last one and a half hours i somehow get a hint that you can quickly do the exam yeah because uh, your experience is very broad you are understanding ability is so faster so once you read the subject i will share the book just read once we'll apply for the exam quick quickly we'll plan for some time in the middle of uh, first week of april or middle of april and we'll hit the exam yeah that sounds like a plan to me yeah we'll do it so that it goes on and uh, yeah okay i will give a little background about the examination which you have to know uh the exam goes around 4 hours okay it goes around uh, why is that sorry sorry i think again it came back um <laughs> what's happening what's happening Now, uh, I do. Hmm. Okay. 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 Now, the point I want to put to here is something to show about. Uh, something to show about the four hours. Did I say four hours? The four hours goes like the exam, PMP exams start and goes four hours where without a break. In your in your uh, infrastructure or your uh, design architecture exams, how many hours it went on, Vincent? It depended on the exam. There's uh, uh, there was nine sections. Wow. Some were two, some were two hours, some were four hours, some were longer with breaks. Oh, okay okay so uh, you are allowed to take break is that right in 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 a couple of them yes mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay how it works in pmp is 4 hours is the exam and in this 4 hours you can take a break on your own risk what it mean it means officially there is no break announced in pmp exam the exam will be keep going on the clock will be ticking you can walk out go for your refreshment and come back faster so it's a four hours of exam how i did is exactly second hour i said my exam invigilator hey i want to go i have a nature call i have to go then he said fine go home so i was out of the exam hall i spent 5 to 6 minutes go ahead complete it come faster for the exam still my clock was ticking it's going on so you will lose 5 to 6 minutes when you go out of the exam hall like that's how it is but a human cannot control for 4 hours right so at least i can't control so i went out and came back <laughs> <laughs> you know what i had one candidate who is around um, 63 64 years of age 
and uh, he was saying that it was so hard for me to control for four hours. Then I recommended him exactly one and a half hours, take a break, three minutes, four minutes, complete, come back. Again, another one and a half hours, take a break, and then come back. So he planned that way. He took two breaks inside the exam and completed the exam. It depends. It depends how you do that. Yeah, we plan yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. And the exam goes around uh, 200 questions. It is multi-choice objective types questions. Right? You'll get four choices. A, B, C, D. Those will be the answers. And you'll choose only one answer. There is no negative marking in the exam. Also, they give the results only as pass or fail. Nothing more. That's it. And how they will do the calculation? They have a grading system. What is grading system? They say that you are above target, you are target, you are below target, or you need improvements. These are things I mentioned to you. Now, what do you mean by about target? We are not sure what is the mark given to be about target. PMI has not declared it. Nobody knows it. But we assume that if someone gets about target, it means a person could be more than 85%. Mm -hmm. it really, nobody knows what it is. Target is good. Below target is not really good. Needs improvement is really tough. Now I have to give a little more idea here. Mm, what I do, where is it? Yeah. Now there are five areas, process groups in project management. I'm sure you should have heard about it. These five called us Process groups. Have you heard about it? Uh, I have not. Okay, I'll explain it. PMP talks about this. We have five process groups in every project. Your project will start, your project will close. Your project will have a plan how to do it. And the project will be executed by the people, by the resources. And when the execution is happening, you will do monitoring and controlling and watch out, are we doing as for the plan? As simple. Example, you are starting from your home and you want to reach Walmart. How far is a Walmart from your place, uh, Vincent? Uh, about 20 minutes. 20 minutes, okay. Now you want to go for a shopping with your family and uh, you want to buy something in the Walmart, so you want to travel, 20 minutes. Now you had the thought in your mind, that's initiation. Morning you thought, I want to go for a Walmart, I want to buy this, this, that. And then by lunch, you started making a plan. What time you have to start, and what kind of dress you have to wear, what is the car you want to take, what are the items you have to buy, how much you have to spend money for it, right? So you capture all this information in a planning phase. And the execution starts exactly by 3 p.m. When you take the car from a garage, the 3 p.m. the execution starts. You started driving towards Walmart. You are reaching a particular signal. There, you find a heavy traffic in that signal. Now, your plan says that you have to cross the signal and reach the Walmart in 20 minutes. But when execution happens, you're waiting in a signal and you know that it is going to consume more than eight minutes to cross the signal. Now, what do you do? You do monitoring and control. In monitoring and control, you look at the plan. The plan says reach in 20 minutes. But when you're executing, it is not going the way what you want. Now you monitor and control it. You will slightly change the plan. Instead of this signal, take a U-turn, go in a different road and reach the Walmart. That's a slight change in the plan. And you'll do the plan. And by the plan, you'll execute it and you reach a Walmart either in 20 minutes or 22 minutes. Once you reach there, you will switch off your car and you start moving towards the Walmart. When you close, when you get to the Walmart and park the car, that's the closing of the project. I'm just giving a very simple, straightforward one. 
this can be considered as one of the project i'm saying a, a, a task which you think as a start a task which you think as an end it is called a project i know you to say you know well about what is project all about right correct right now now why i'm explaining that here now when you go for the examination you will be questioned in initiation you will be questioned in planning you will be questioned in execution monitoring control and closing and in each area you should get above target target at least above target and target this is the things you have to get if you get more amount of below target you will be in trouble i will reiterate now this is a five process groups which we are going to learn in pmp in depth how your project starts how the project close how the planning happens how you execute this is all be explained when you go for examination the questions will come for you in initiation there will be some set of questions in planning some set of questions now you have to get above target target or below target in these areas each area 1 2 3 4 five now what happens is imagine in initiation you are getting above target good in planning you are getting target good in execution in case if you get below target the overall result will become this and i'll say, i'll go for the past two case in initiation you get above target planning you get above target execution you get a target monitor and control you get above target and closing you get below target they will say you are pass you cleared the pmp are you able to follow this yep great so this is how the exam going to happen and one clear point here is there is no negative marking that's cool and one other thing i want to explain for the examination is in 200 questions you will get 25 questions which is called as pre test questions what it mean is in this 200 questions 25 questions will be plotted here and there and they will see how the people are answering these questions and based on the people's answering ability that questions will be used for next exam for different candidates so what is happening here is pmp or pmi is using you as a person for a test rat they give some questions to you and see how you are answering and they'll use it for next exam now what's the message here is they call them as pre test questions however it is you no need to worry anything your eyes should be always on answering all the 200 questions so exam goes for hours you will have 200 questions no negative marking it's objective type questions a b c d either of one as answer and there is no negative where you have only grading system when you get grading above target in all you are called as pmp qualified person and i'm strongly believing all my candidates get above target in all the area right so that's the uh, stats we have now in our institute good amazing let's move yeah um vensel what we'll do is we'll spend another 15 minutes to talk a little more other subject then we will break for the day because as i said on the first day i don't overload too much for the candidates i will get your email and details where i'll share the digital books where you can start reading okay right and uh, yeah i'll give a little more details when we close the session for the day i'll take another 15 minutes to give a little more explanation about the basics okay so how is the saturday look like you have plans for the saturday uh i took care of all my plans so i could be here oh okay That's i'm with you man amazing amazing i'm i like the way you love pmp now <laughs> <laughs> and does it sound easy to take for you it, uh, i know the information it's just uh-huh. being organized being put in a in a format mm okay that's what i'm seeing right now so that's great how do you know about pmp who who gave a hint for you in pmp what that uh, how how do you came came to know about pmp or 
Um, have you read about PMP some time back? Uh, uh, I, I did a search on uh, project management online. Okay. And it took me to PMI. Okay. And then I kind of did a little research as to what certificates were out there or what uh, learning mm. abilities were out there. So that's where I found mm. out. Wenzel, you did a great job. And you have to give a credit to Google, Google right? Google Drive to here. Yep. <laughs> okay. Yeah. PMI, PMP is a world number one in project management. I just love these guys. Okay. Let me get in. Uh, this, this is called as a five domains or five top areas which to be covered in project management. I hope that my volume is good for you. You're able to hear me well. Yes. That's great. So do you see a pizza there? Color, color, green, red. Yep. <laughs> a pie chart. Now in this pie chart, uh, this is called as five process groups. And I will start from the lowest one. There is seven percentage. What is seven percentage here? Can you see that? It's the uh, closing, closing of the project. Amazing. Amazing. A manager or a leader of a particular project will spend only 7% of their time in closing of the project. What do you mean by closing? Closing is officially getting the formal signature from the customer, settling down all the documents and deliverables, which can consume 7% of the overall project time. That was a key indication here. Now let me go to initiating, which is 13% of the time. That is the beginning of the project. I'm sure you'll be aware of a project charter, right? Where we talk about the beginning of the project, where we get the SOW, where we get the agreement of the project, where we get the business case of the project. That is the starting stage of the project, right? So now, that area we spend 13% of a project manager time. 13% of the overall project time is spent on starting the project. See, you will be interested to know that the project comes from a sales team. The sales team contact the customer and explain the customer, hey guys, you know what? We have a project for you. Will you be interested to take this? That's a one way of communication. Sometimes customer directly come to the organization say that, hey guys, can you do your project for me? Can you construct a home for me? Can you construct an apartment for me? Can you construct an official complex for me? They come to you. It can be this way or our sales team go and talk to the customer. Now, whatever it is, communication happens quickly. They will do business value analysis. They will see, will this project give benefit to the company? Will this project increase the goodwill of the company? Will this give customer satisfaction reputation in the market? Once this is all done, then they come for the project charter. A charter is a very high level information about the project budget, project timeline, and project description. Anyhow, I'm going to spend good time on that. For now, it's only heads up to you. Now that happens in initiating, which we spend 13% of our time. Now what happened? You have 13% of time spent there. Now, very interestingly, we spend 24 hour percentage of our time in planning. Now, what do you mean by planning? And here is a place architects and technical experts and some of the domain experts spend time in planning the work. Imagine there is a commercial complex construction coming up and you know that it's a 10 store building and you know that the square feet it's around good amount of 3 lakh square feet or 4 lakh square feet. Now you know this requirement, you know the need, you know the technical aspects and we work with the experts in the market, experts in the organization and we make a superb plan to move the project forward. The planning we spend 24% of the time. And next goes on execution. Do you see execution taking a lot amount of time? Uh, yes, it should take most of the time. Yeah, 31% of the energy takes by execution. Here is a place actually human resource starts working. Material starts being executed here. 
and most of the managers spend their time in execution and they think that execution is what only called project management whenever i take a training i help them to understand execution is part of project management you should know about planning you should know about monitoring and controlling you should know about starting and closing of the project also unfortunately some of the managers are given the task to do given an excel sheet they will say complete all this task then they think that that's project then i have to tell them that that's not project that's part of project but i agree execution takes a lot of time a lot of energy a lot of effort that's why we see here 31% of the time spent here when you do execution what will happen is you made a plan here and you're doing execution here and there is always a chance there will be variance what i mean by variance i thought something but when i do it it will be different do you agree wenzel you feel this kind of difference in your work yeah um usually executing is uh, where we work by the plan but there may be some adjustments that need to be made to make yeah. it better or or absolutely. make it work faster yeah absolutely we would have thought something to do but when you do the work with the real resources it will go in a different way or your customer will come and inject something where the scope, that's where the scope creep comes it will heat your brain <laughs> <laughs> they will eat your brain with the coke and pepsi <laughs> <laughs> that is called customers okay they pay money they will eat you no other go now what's happening here is you plan you executing and you have to monitor and control it what do you mean monitor and control we watch out is it going as per the plan if not as per the plan make corrections and that corrections will be called as change request if you are aware you know about cr call cr a change request where it will go through a systematic flow you cannot just like that accept the change when you keep accepting just like the change that is called as a scope creep imagine there is a home construction they look out for a two balcony and you have to complete the work you made a beautiful plan work started and you started moving the work two balconies are ready and the building is coming up really beautiful really beautiful you have completed the work almost 60% and the customer is visiting the home construction what you are doing and they look at the building and his wife the owner's wife say that hey honey can we add one more balcony ah oh, requirement thing now you being an architect you being a project manager what you will do wenzel uh well i would try to find out what the, re- the main reasoning was for the adjustment and then perfect perfect and then, and, you- and then let them know the pros and cons and uh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. they're going to make the final decision so yeah what he said is absolutely right you have to talk about pros and cons i'll tell you many managers fail here i like the way you said you do analysis you talk about the pros and cons with the stakeholders before agreeing on the changes but what's happening is some of the managers they bit worried that as the requirement is coming from the sponsor i have to shake my head and accept it i keep pushing the manager said don't accept immediately first do the analysis give a report clearly what will be the impact of these changes it can impact your cost it can impact your schedule it can impact your resource availability it can increase some of the risk it can now i as a manager or a leader or an architect i'll convey the message to my stakeholders of course ma'am giving another balcony is beautiful but when we touch this our design changes like this because we don't have enough pillar 
to hold a balcony on the east direction which you are asking for if we want to change it we have to inc introduce two more pillars there that's going to shoot up a little more on the cost a little more on the time a little more on the changes of the architecture when we explain all these factors the customer will understand the depth of the changes and we are not threatening them we are giving the information to them also we give a opinion to them yes we can do it i'm not saying not doable do it but it will eat extra time extra money and you should be aware of it because next month is a deadline of deliverable you will knock my door on exactly april 2 and ask me where is my home key i have to tell you guys be prepared since he asked a new requirement change now i cannot deliver on april 2 i will deliver only on may 2 if you agree on this deal if you agree on the changes cost factor resource factor yes we are ready to do and again there are some requirements which is not feasible at all when you do the architecture analysis you understand that if i introduce one more balcony here the whole building shape will get collapsed now what do you do you will tell right away guys it's too late we have crossed 65 percent of the work now if you make a change the system will totally collapse can we say that denzel yes that could happen can happen we can tell them we can we can advise them i know i i, I do love to give the best architecture building for you but unfortunately we have 65 percent crossed in the work now if you're going to ask for a change that's going to be trouble for us not only for me for you you are the guys going to live in the building i want to give the best quality building for you so now these all will happen in monitor and controlling where we have something called change request handling it is called as ccb that is change control board yeah. now everything is good we go and close the project i am talking in a high high level i am talking in 30000 feet high and i'm going to explain all this step by step each process with some of the information from pmp as we go hour by hour and now i'll go back to the same slide and this is what asked in the examination if you see here 200 questions will come in these areas when you see the percentage is 7 it means in 200 questions 14 questions will be from closing if it is 13% 26 questions will be from initiating if it is 24% 48 questions will be from planning so this is how the exam is going to work right so okay. yeah sounds interesting right yeah well yeah. that explained pretty well actually <laughs> <laughs> okay now it's uh, yeah i said 10 minutes but i eat and you are 15 minutes i'll spend another 10 15 minutes to give a little heads up about the pmi sum there is something called pmi sum it is a term just like that coined uh, what it mean here is i made a yellow marking here what it mean is the exam questions are coming with a background to say that and they believe that wenzel is a manager who work in a bigger project of more or equal to 10 million budget and uh, also the exam believes that you should have worked or you would have worked with the 200 people why i put this here is the exam question is based or question is framed like that uh, because the same exam is being written around 180 countries and people from different culture different domain different knowledge come for the exam so they set up a very generalized question with the scenarios now why that's being explained here is you should be aware the exam is not targeting a smaller audience it's a big audience so they expect you to have a knowledge to say that or think when you look at the question think yourself as a manager as a leader who is handling more than 100 of people in your team and you are working in a project is nearly around 10 million it's a huge right 
I believe, uh, Wenzel, you should have worked more than this bigger projects. Is that right? Yes. What's the max? What the project you did so far? Um, we're currently working on an eighty million dollar project right now. Oh my God! Did you say eight zero? Yep. Oh God, man! If you're a billionaire, closing to that. <laughs> God's sake, you feel a lot of dollars in your finger. Yeah. <laughs> you feel proud about it? <laughs> you should. Why not? Million. Amazing, amazing. See the trust you created with the customer. They believe at you. All right. I appreciate it. That's really good job you're doing there. Yeah. Right. Yeah, great. I'm just throwing a sample question here. The very basic, simple question. A scenario-based question. Read the question and try one of the answer given here. So let's understand how it goes. I would say uh, C would be the answer. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. Uh, this question can be looked in multiple dimension. Uh, let me try to read the question again. You are receiving a notification that a major item, okay, you are purchasing for a project will be delayed. What will be the best thing to do? In PMP, PMI, whenever they use the word best, it means all the four answers are correct out of which one is the best one. What it means is, there's nothing wrong here. Everything's right. As a manager, everything's right. But what is the closest answer? Now, when I read the question, it says that there's a major item. Major means it's a critical item for your work. For, a, for construction, there could be some material supply. Could be metal, could be wood, could be cements, could be blocks. Something should be supplied. That's coming late. Now, as a manager, what would be the best thing to do is? And the answer coming from you is, let the customer know about it and talk over options. I love the way you're saying it's very transparent. You want to be. Is that right? Correct. But before that, there are other more options. Can you try one more option now? If not, see. I would do D, meet with the team and figure out alternatives. There you are. You got one more pizza from me. Okay. <laughs> uh, my idea is, yes, good to go to the customer. But before that, first we have to talk to the team. We can address the team to check out what are the alternate options we can do. Guys, let's meet up quickly. I know items are coming late. Can you give me some alternate options? And your team will give some wonderful ideas. When you say team, it is not only the people reporting to you. It is the people who work along with you. It could be a senior folks of your team. It can be some of the sponsors of the team. It can be some of the key architects, key experts in the market of the team. So the team word goes very broad. And all these people you meet and you tell the situation and they give some alternate ideas. If that doesn't work out, then you have to intimate your stakeholders. So there it can come to see. Yeah, is that mapping? Yes. Yeah, the best, when they use the word best, it goes to first try with the team what can be done. If that fails, then you have to intimate the customer because customer pays the money, but they may not be interested to know the problems which you want to say to them. They always want the best results. If you go and tell them that it won't work, then they'll say that, guys, thank you. Let me try another manager. They'll go off. So that's the reason we go for the vice D. So this, this is one of the example. It doesn't mean that this is how it will be. I just want to show you how a question may look like. Yeah, okay. Fine. Yeah, that's the point. Okay, uh, this will be the last slide for you before you feel very bored and tired. So <laughs> I... <laughs> okay, here it goes. Uh, I have six points here. 
in the sense first thing review the pmp examination content so uh, i am giving some heads up to you on the pmp content that's what happening now and there is something called exam outline i'm going to share you later point today or tomorrow where it has 19 pages pdf document and that will talk about which area the exam questions will be asked that will be in the document i will share the document to you a bit later first you have to know that then you have to enroll into the institute yes you already did it and prepare a study plan after or when we complete the close i will give you study plan which is a 21 days of study plan i will share an excel sheet in what order you have to read what you have to read i will explain that for you that will do then you have to review the pimbok content when i say pimbok project management body of knowledge so we already doing that what we are doing here is what mentioned in the green color now in the blue color you have to practice sample test yes i smart is going to help you with the practice test after reading the book you will start practicing so uh, don't try to do immediately uh, yes you will score really well but still you have to first practice read the book properly and then go for it and then form a study group we may expect couple of more joining the session so we will have more discussion with them and you all read together one beautiful thing about pmp is when you read with a couple of more person your reading ability will be much faster because they will share some information you will share some of the examples and you guys connect really well right this is how we do okay. so this is a plan i have it for pmp that will help you to move towards the examination okay saying that uh, i think we took good time here to get the basics of pmp set some of the ground about examination and i was trying to give you a heads up about what is the demand in the market right yep. i was even giving some of the sample of the project which happened really that's called case study right and also we understood there's a great demand going to come for managers where you and me going to earn a huge amount of dollars Right. Sounds like a plan to me. <laughs> okay, so that uh, will be the basics for you to understand the project management profession certification. Do you have any questions for the day for me? No questions. Okay, sounds good. So uh, here is a plan, uh, Vincent. The plan is something like uh, uh, today we started it. So I'm going to share you a book and information. and i would expect you to just go through couple of pages or couple of chapter so i'll give some time for you to read that before we start the next session so uh, what will happen is we will hit back again by next saturday and meantime i'll be giving the book for you to go through that and come for the session so will be a good time for you so we're meeting next saturday again but right. in the, in the meantime part mm -hmm. of this course is to read the books yes you're going to do that i'm going to share you a material where you're going to read through and get the basics on the first two chapters are are we meeting tomorrow uh tomorrow we are not meeting as i'm also getting into another program and also i would expect uh, uh, you can spend little time on reading the subject before okay. you connect for the understanding on classes So, so there's no login. It's just self, self preparing, basically. No, there will be a good amount of classes coming up for you. It's only a start for you now. So, it's going to be a session happening continuously going forward from the Saturday coming on, right? So, I'm going to explain you all the content step by step. Now, what I'm doing is giving you some heads up and helping you with the book. which you have to read through which will be so useful when i'm going to explain the content makes okay. sense yeah to give a heads up to you do you see here the ppt so we have around uh, 360 slides this is all for you only so okay. i'm going to explain this every chapter of it if you see here you see all the subject here right i'm yep. going to talk about the basics stakeholder communication scope i talked about nine or 10 knowledge areas everything i'm going to cover you including agile concepts are you aware of agile concepts um i'm a little confused on that one but okay don't worry i'll explain you 
Okay. So there is something very highly demanded in the market called Agile. I, okay. I'm going to talk about that elaborated. So you, you, you will be flown with information. That kind of information I have for you. So uh, we may not have session tomorrow. So in spite of that, I'm going to give a material. I'll get an email ID from you. I'm going to share the email material. By the way, can you ping your email ID? Uh, Do you have a chat here? Okay, you're able to see the chat here. What? What's that? Can Can you see the chat? What I'm typing here? Um, I cannot. Mm hmm. You can see my screen, isn't it? Yeah, I can see your screen. I'm on Agile, and then there's a text box behind it. Okay, behind it. Okay. I, I've just asked you to share the email ID. Uh, my email? Yeah. It's R G M L E N Z E L at C P L T A M dot com. Okay, I think I missed something here. Do you have a Gmail ID, Google? A Google ID? Yeah. Uh, off the top of my head, I don't remember it. <laughs> okay. What I do is I'll connect with Sean and uh, JJ to collect your contact. So okay. what I will do is I will get you a book which you can start going through that. Okay. Right. And we'll be in touch by some communication. So in this one week, there won't be any gap. So we will be in communication by chat or giving a email ID and getting the books to you. I'll be in continuous touch for next three, four days with you. Okay. There won't be a session, but I'll be in touch with you in other form. And when you come back on next Saturday, the session will start back with the information which I shared here and also the books what you read. Will that be a good plan for you? Sure. Fantastic. So you're going to spend the Saturday happy Sunday happy and you're going to come back on rain next Saturday. Is that cool? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> so I'm so impressed the way you're observing the class. I'm really impressed the way you show the interest in PMP. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to learn and hopefully uh, have a certificate by the end. Yes, that's an ultimate goal. There are a huge amount of dollars waiting for us. I, I'll, I'll take that too as a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Is there any feedback for the session? Can be done. Um, I mean, you observe anything you want to add on? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, I will get the details of your uh, contact through Sean, and I will start communication over the mobile with you. You prefer utilizing WhatsApp? Do you use WhatsApp? Do I use what? Um, the WhatsApp. The chat chat system. No, I'm not familiar with that. Okay, no props. I will connect you to over the email and start getting sharing the books to you. Okay, that's that may be a starting point for us. Sounds good. Okay. Great, and uh, yeah. Hey, hey, do we have Sean in the call? Yes, uh, I'm. I'm hey, here. Sean. Yes. Hey, Sean. Sean, uh, we, are, we are going like this. So what happened is uh, we and Benzil had a good discussion about setting the basics of project management and uh, some of the explanation about the um, examination and details about project. So it's, it's a very uh, interesting discussion happened with both of us. So what the plan here is, uh, I'm going to share him a book where he's going to start reading through that. And uh, okay. as, as as planned, like next Saturday, we'll meet back, and uh, from there on, it'll become a deep dive with him. So that's the discussion we had. Okay, that's that's uh, yeah, that's good to hear. Yes. Yeah, great. Yeah, do you want to share any words with Vincent so that we can uh, call it a day? Uh, I'm all set. Uh, Raymond, do you have any feedback uh, at the moment? Pardon. What was that, Sean? Uh, Raymond, can you hear me? I can. All right. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to check whether 
you know, do you have any feedback uh, so far? Uh, I, I think it's been great so far. So, all right, mm -hmm. wonderful, good to hear that. And uh, yeah, I was listening to your uh, conversation. So, uh, Sri, I'll, I'll uh, share uh, Raymond's mm -hmm. email address uh, so mm -hmm. that you can send all the information. Yes, I need that. I will share with him and let him kickstart the learning process. So we'll continue from there. Absolutely. Great. Great, Wenzel. Have a fantastic weekend. Have a lot of fun. We'll connect again for PMP. We'll do. It'll be the same uh, login for next Saturday, correct? Yes. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. See if there is a uh, change in... Uh, uh, the link, uh, I will let you know, Raymond. Okay, that sounds good. Don't worry good. about that. Yeah, okay. so don't worry. Everything will be communicated to you. You'll be in touch from the team consistently. No worries. Sounds good. Fantastic. If your pizza is on the way for your fantastic answers. Thank you. All right. It was great to meet you guys. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Raymond. Thank you, Sri. Right. Thanks, Sean.